Here is a presentation of multiplexes and switches. We have a two devices to one device, a two to one DMUX, and then we have uh, multiplexers that take a single I2C bus and branch them out. Uh, the multiplexers have a single wiper within them. Uh, we have either two, four, or eight channel devices. Two are shown here. And the wiper just allows you to select one channel or the other channel or any one of the channels one at a time. Um, and we have devices with power on resets, a reset pin, or interrupt logic. And the multiplexers were designed for address conflict. If you have two devices with the same address, they obviously can't be on the same bus because you don't know who you're talking to. Uh, if you put a multiplexer in there like the PCA 9540B, uh, you talk to this slave device, it opens up one channel and it talks to this I2C slave, and then you open up the other channel and you talk to the other slave. This way there's a deconflict of the address and you know which device that you're talking to. Uh, here's an application where it shows a four-channel multiplexer. Each one of these cards here have the same address on the, on the GPIO. And so one channel at a time, you can talk to the cards. And this device here, the PCA9540A, has an interrupt collector. So any of these interrupts from the GPIO go to this one device, and then there's only one interrupt that goes to the master. There's other devices that we have that are called switches. These have an individual wiper for each one of the channels. There's a two, four, eight channel device with a power on reset and a reset pin, and then there's others with the, uh, uh, the, the interrupt logic that's uh, collected. And these wipers allow you to do several different things. Uh, it allows you to have all the branches on at the same time. So in this case here, you just happen to want to have two different groups of devices. Uh, you can do that in order to isolate load, or if there's some devices you don't want to have on all the time, you can just isolate that branch. And then it's also great for false iso or fault isolation. So here's the f uh, four channel or the eight channel device, PCA 9548A, and uh, the bus is working, uh, but then you have a problem on device five. And that's going to freeze up the whole bus. And then what you can do is you can go through and reset the 9548A, the master comes out one bus at a time until it sees that, hey, device five is the device that's hanging up the bus, and then it can reset the 9548A again, and then just go out to the other devices. Uh, so the switches are excellent for uh, fault isolation also. And then the switches are also good for level translation. Again, you can have multiple buses on at the same time. The devices are powered from 2.3 volts to 5 volts. They operate up to 400 K hertz. And uh, you can turn on several of the buses, and you can have pull-ups to different voltages. So for like 5 volts, 3.3 volts, uh, this could be a 2.5 volt master. So you can also use these devices for, for voltage level translation. And then the 2 to 1 master selector, the 2 to 1 DMUX, uh, this was designed when you have two masters and they're either multi-master capable or maybe they're not multi-master capable, capable. And if they are multi-master capable, maybe you don't want them on the same bus uh, for, uh, re, for, for uh, redundancy or prevent a bent pin or something like that causing problems. So you have two masters and they want to go to the same device. So this device allows you to do that. And here's an example where we have the 9541A talking to an EEPROM or a FRU that needs to be shared between different masters. So we have a master here that needs to talk to the double EEPROM. This master needs to talk to the double EEPROM. This master needs to talk to this double EEPROM here, and master B needs to talk to it also. So it allows you to have masters talking to shared slaves without the masters being able to talk to each other. Uh, there's a different application here that you have one master going across the back plane. The double EEPROMs all have the same address. The 9541A has different addresses. The slash 03 version um, is initially turned off, so no channels are selected. And you can have all channels not on, select one board to operate, and then talk to the double EEPROM. Uh, here's a summary of the multiplexers and switches. Again, multiplexers. Uh, allow you to only have one channel selected at a time. Switches can have multiple channels selected at a time. Uh, number of addresses, uh, these are slave devices, whether they do interrupts or have the hardware reset. And the key benefits are the fault tolerance isolation. Uh, that's the main use of the devices in a lot of the larger systems. 
uh, address conflict resolution, and then two of the other uh, isolating capacitance by switching off non-active buses and then voltage level translation. And then we have a new device that's coming out also. It's going to be released uh, first quarter of 2011, uh, PCA9646. The 6 means it's a fast mode plus device. It goes up to 1 megahertz and it has 10 times the normal drive. Uh, so you can go up to 540 picofarad at the speed of 1, one megahertz. Uh, so it's a higher speed multiplexer. It drops in for the PCA9546, same footprint. And this device also has bus buffers within the channel. Uh, for the other devices, they don't isolate capacitance. The capacitance on one side of the PCA95-4X systems, the capacitance on this side and this side, it's all combined into one system. But now for the PCA9646, there are buffers that are designed into the device, which isolates capacitance on each one of the, uh, on each one of the bus segments. Uh, so you can have up to 540 puff at, at the one megahertz. Okay, and on the I2C 2005-1 board, you have the GUI, and the GUI controls the PCA9543A, which is the two-channel multiplexer. Uh, so here, if we want to enable channel zero, you push zero and right, and now the channel's enabled. If you want to enable channel one, you can do that also. And in order to see that, in fact, we've done that, then you can deselect and press read, and you see that the channels are enabled. Uh, you can always do the auto-write feature also, which changes the channels as soon as you touch the screen, very easy control.